All right. Hello again, everybody, and 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 welcome to another exciting episode of the Legend of the Three Kingdoms. Yes, this is my second custom campaign set in my custom world uh, that I have a name for that I've never told anybody because it's never come up. Um, but yeah, so this is my uh, custom campaign and the people you see uh, below me are, are, are uh, the people that have decided to uh, put their characters' lives in my hands, um, which was probably a poor decision, but you know we'll, we'll find out. Um, to kind of bring you up to speed on uh, 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 what's happened recently, uh, the group uh, kind of all came together for, for, for different reasons and converged on this town called Dorme, which was being harassed by a, uh, a noble who was trying to chase them off the land for some reason. They were able to stop the noble and his army, uh, but when they uh, when they fought his like key lieutenant, he turned into locusts, and then like a rip in reality appeared, and a big beast of flame came through, and they were able to take it out, but were captured by uh, vampire troops and taken to a house uh, pretty far away uh, for trial and sentencing. Uh, Briar got uh, uh, convicted of espionage and a bunch of other things. And uh, then you, uh, you guys were able to escape with help from some unknown third party. Uh, and uh, as uh, you finally uh, fleed the city and started heading towards the Fenrish border uh, when you uh, came upon an old acquaintance of Briar's who uh, 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 said that he had been paid to bring Briar back to Valakovia. Uh, and the rest of you guys tagged along because you didn't really have a better idea. Uh, and so that's what uh, you guys have been doing is, is uh, getting away from House Don Joe, uh, which is where uh, you guys were held, and they probably still have people tracking you. Um, and the current goal right now is to get to this lake uh, between House Don Joe and House Merovingian. Uh, get into the lake and then exit uh, at a different point because uh, they can't really track you while you're swimming and it's a large enough lake that uh, you guys can can kind of lose them pretty easily. So uh, you've been traveling for, for th three or four days um, and you finally have gotten to the point where you can see the lake shore from your campsite. It's probably another hour or, or two uh, walk from, from where you guys are currently. But you're close enough to uh, see it. Uh, yeah, we, we should be unmuted. I was just making sure because it's the last time. Or the yeah, wolf, yeah. But. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so um, you scared me for a second there. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, it's the uh, uh, early morning. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to to do before you kind of head off for the the, the lake? Um, now nah, I'm good. Cool. All right, so. Uh, Someone remind me of this NPC's name because my, my brain is gone. Uh, something Angel of Death. And oh, Vordent. What? What? Say again. Vord, Vordent. Vordent. Uh, yeah, Vordent uh, gives up. Goes, okay, it's, uh, it's time for us to go. All right? I think he was Russian, wasn't he? 
Yeah. Yeah, because you said it was your favorite. Um, so you're going to get you guys all up, and, and uh, uh, he goes, I have, um, I, 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 uh, I've scouted the, uh, the area to ensure there is nothing waiting to surprise us. Unless they can hold their breath for over 30 minutes, I think we are safe for the time being. Once we get uh, in the water, uh, we should be um, a little bit uh, safer, let's say. So, are you all ready to go? Yep. All right, follow me. Yeah. Uh, and so you guys head down to this water's edge, and um, as he gets there, uh, you see him uh, doing something that involves me looking for a book. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll just cast a message to Argenta. He's so cool. Mentally, you hear back. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'll slowly start trying to emulate his walk. <laughs> oh, gee. To remember if this is a thing or if I made it up. Why not both? We are now officially traveling with Zoidberg. <laughs> what about Zoidberg? Sever, <laughs> he's probably a better doctor than Henri. This is probably Valor Avon's uh, hated terrain. <laughs> Water. <laughs> there we go. That just that just makes it more challenging. <laughs> Anyone can find a way. It's Vala. If SpongeBob can do it, she can do it. Vala, find a way. You just always carry chunks of magnesium on you in case you need to make a fire underwater. <gasps> First we drown orcas, or suffocate orcas. Now you find a way to create fire underwater. No, no, no. Orcas can breathe air. It's not for long. We we just bludgeoned them to death. <laughs> well, no, they they can survive. Like they're not gonna choke to death on air. They're gonna like die of starvation or something. So he um, right now. he gets to the water's edge, and he pulls out what looks like a small box. It's about six inches by six inches by about twelve inches. Uh, m made of wood, and 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 he looks at the rest of you and goes, "Well, I guess this will have to be slightly larger than I originally hoped. We better be fast." Gorvo, ta. And as he says that, you see him kind of toss the box down, and the box opens on its own, and opens again and again you see it just kind of unfolding itself and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually it becomes uh, a, a, a pretty large boat there's uh, five rows of um, or five sets of oars with five rowing positions there's a small captain's cabin it's got an anchor on it like it's, you know, pretty decent sized boat, not like a full galleon or anything like that. Uh, and he goes, "Okay, everyone on the boat, preferably in one of the seats with the oars. We need to move very quickly now." All right, I'll get on the boat and get into a seat with an oar. <laughs> okay. So do I. Not knowing what an ore is, I'll just pick a random spot. Okay. Uh, hold on a sec. 
Uh, even or odd? Even. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> you go in and, and the first thing you do, because you see an area that has a little bit of, of cover and shade and everything, you walk into the c- captain's cabin, which has <laughs> some ch- seats in it, and you just sit down. <laughs> Completely and angry. You just see uh, Vorden go, Oi, China. <laughs> um, <laughs> We need your help out here. This boat fits 15 people. We have seven. Uh, it's going to take a lot of us to get it moving fast enough so that they don't see the boat. I'll just, do, do you understand I'll just, what I'm saying? I'll just walk to a seat that I think he's pointing at and sit down. Close enough. All right, everyone. Uh, start uh, rowing on my command. Uh, unfortunately, due to the fact that there is an odd number of us, one of us uh, will have to just keep time for everyone else, and, and being the very humble person that I am, I volunteer for this job. So, Well, I was going to say, I know a few sea shanties that I could play to mark time. It is fantastic. Can you sing them? I can sing them. Fantastic. Then you don't need to play them. You can just sing them while you are rowing. <laughs> that is a very good idea, Vala. I knew I kept you around here for some reason. And it wasn't if, because killing you would be too much of a hassle. If, uh, it going, be. going by the art you use whenever you fade out, Vala does not look like the type of person that would row a boat, does she? I have I my my everyone my strength is my lowest if you stat. Give, if 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 you try hard <laughs> enough, everyone can row boat. All right. Unreason arms look like just spaghetti. <laughs> it's it's okay. <laughs> Lillian and Argento will carry. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have everybody because as much as there is a strength aspect to rowing. Um, rowing is, as part of a team uh, is, is much more of a coordination thing than it is being e- exceptionally strong. Uh, so I'm actually going to have everybody uh, roll me uh, just straight up de- 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 dexterity checks. This, I'm okay with Ooh. I'm okay with this. I mean, some okay. strength is, is useful in rowing, don't get me wrong, but... You can have some less than physically fit people and still be useful. Ar- Ar- Argento, what'd you get? 18. Not bad. Val? 19. Cool. Commander? Uh, 21. Damn. Henri? If it was strength, it'd be zero, but since it's dex, it's four. <laughs> oh, no. Briar? 21. And Lillian? Six. Oh, I was hoping it was a six. <laughs> so the rest of you guys kind of take like this, like a duck to water, where you just kind of, you know, Vala's sitting there, sing, do you have a, a sea shanty you want to sing for us? I, I uh, cannot find a good one. Gotcha. So, uh, let's... What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. So he and sets so on up and so a pretty fast pace. Very very long. Everything that you can do to keep up with. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, but you guys uh, uh, start uh, heading off, and. Um, are making some 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 pretty good distance. This lake itself uh, is uh, massive, like Great Lake size, like not like you know. I don't even know which is the biggest Great Lake. Um, and I live next to them, uh, or near them. Um, but uh, so it's 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 large enough that that once you get pretty far down, 
uh, uh, the horizon, you get m more and more difficult, or the, 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 the further uh, out you go, you, the, the more and more difficult it gets to spot you. Um, but as you guys uh, 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 are uh, heading out, um, you row for about, you know, Uh, for about two to three hours, and you've lost sight of the shoreline at this point. Um, and uh, at this point, uh, Vorden uh, turns you on and goes, Okay, now we, we pivot north so we can check out your your crazy town. And he kind of directs you guys on how to, you know, turn the ship at everything, and he goes to the rudder and 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 Henri is still just kind of flopping around with his oar. I'm like watching around, trying to figure out how people are doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, the person in front of Henri, let's say it's uh, can't be Henri. <laughs> uh, Briar, uh, you keep getting splashed with water every like 10 or 15 minutes as he's trying to, to keep up and will like lose rhythm and just like flail for a little bit and then splash you. Uh, so yeah, you guys uh, uh, eventually uh, start turning to the north. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, again, because there literally is, is nothing obstructing your view um, you can start to notice things pretty far out. Um, and you notice now that you've turned north, uh, that, uh, it looks like you can see pretty far north. Like we're talking miles and miles here, but because there's nothing to obstruct your view right now, um, you can see what looks like maybe a storm or a, a really heavy, cloud of smoke or, or something just very dark to the north. Um, and is it anyone here nature, magic at all oriented? Definitely not me. I mean, anyone kind of? trained in nature? I'm trained in nature and I'm a totem barbarian that okay. kind of has then, ritual. Then Argenta, you would, you would kind of get this bit of a bad feeling about it. like it just it doesn't seem like a natural cloud formation just something about it seems wrong and, and, and out of out of out of place does it seem similar to uh, when we were in the uh, vampire district no very different okay. those technically was natural cloud cover that was just artificially created oh okay um, so it was just storm clouds and stuff like that that are just always there this just uh, again the rest of you will just you know notice something weird uh, Argenta because you're trained in nature um, you would just you know it doesn't it doesn't look like what a regular cloud formation does you actually can see some like jagged edges to some of the clouds which doesn't happen with clouds they tend to be kind of fluffy um, and the, the shape of it as well doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like thunder clouds are these real big, uh, what are they, cumulonimbus? I can't remember. But they're these really big, tall ones, and then there's other kind of flat ones in that. This is like no cloud formation you've ever seen. But it's far enough away that you can't get too many details about it other than it just looks weird. You just hear Argenta say that doesn't rub me the right way. Well, you don't make me feel right either, so perhaps the clouds feel the same way about you that I do. Maybe. Listen, I care not for uh, clouds and things like that. I care about we get here and then we go to uh, Valakovia. Any other uh, things that we must say before uh, I continue us on our path? 
water but you know what I mean <laughs> good keep rowing um, uh, singing one perhaps we sing slightly slower song um, if you kill Briar before I get her back um, then I have to kill you and it just it becomes very very messy All right, so um, a little bit slower. <laughs> There's a port on a western bay, and it serves a hundred ships a day. Lonely <laughs> sailors pass the time away talking about their homes. You've broken the DM. Take a point of inspiration. <laughs> So do we get like reverse inspiration for that, or no? If 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 you can if you can break the DM, I will give you a point of inspiration. All right, good to know. Uh, that's generally how I, I run my games. Is, uh, uh, wow. <laughs> I was I was going through sea shanties in my head. That was not one of them. <laughs> hey, it's a song about sailors. <laughs> so suddenly, Vala um, singing this really nice song, and then suddenly, just out of nowhere, using her bardic skills, you hear this. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> Uh, you guys row for another about four or five hours, uh, and you uh, make it to shore. You you, you beach the boat, uh, and then you hear him go uh, say another uh, set of magic words, and the boat just folds in on itself and turns back to the six by six by twelve little you know box, and he hides it on his person. And you never uh, that quite is know a very how useful cool something. Like this could be. All right, it's time for us to uh, head to this uh, city of yours. Uh, and as he says that, uh, he suddenly kind of stops. He's like, Shy metal. Get to cover now. Get to cover now, now, now. And you see him dash for uh, kind of like a uh, uh, shrubbery uh, that's thick enough for him to kind of hide behind and everything. Uh, is there any trees nearby? Uh, from where you are, the, the tree line is probably about 100, 150 yards away. Um, there's some, you know, uh, there's some, some rocks uh, that are probably about like knee to waist height. Uh, and then there's some shrubs every so often, but there's there's not a whole lot of cover. You guys aren't in a very coverful spot. Is he hiding from the view from the water or from the forest? Uh, his uh, you you can't really tell exactly what he's hiding from, uh, but uh, you can see him like he can be seen from the water. Okay. Uh, our yeah, I will because, duck down behind some, some rocks. Okay. Because I can now stealth at a normal pace, because I have wolf-like sensibilities, I guess. Okay. I'm just going to find something that can cover my entire body and kind of crouch down behind it. Anyone that wants to, to try and hide, go ahead and roll me a, um, a stealth check. I'm casting invisibility. Okay. I'm going to uh, lie down behind the bu one of the bushes. I'll dive behind a rock. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll start with Argenta. Uh, nat 20 for a total of 25. Argenta disappears. The <laughs> funny thing was, Argenta only found, like, a couple rocks that were, like, you know, ankle high. And still found a way, like, digging and pressing herself into the uh, sand. Uh, was able to hide behind them. Uh, v Vala? Uh, 16. 16K. Commander? 
Uh, 22. Did you guys just get that unresponsive notice, too? Yeah, yeah. Wait, what, what? It said, like, roll 20 is unresponsive, and then and I'm still here, but... Uh, just oh. the wait button. Gen generally, what that means is it's it's trying to uh, 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 enact a, uh, uh, a line of code, and it's taking a little bit of time. Uh, yeah. As long as video chat is still working, it doesn't matter. Uh, the joys of Chrome. Um, really? It's not unresponsive. I know that. Yeah, it keeps popping up for me. It's been three times now. Uh, if you don't... Oh, that would be why it's unresponsive. The video chat is working, but uh, everything else uh, on here is not... Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna refresh real quick. Uh, you might want to try the same. Okay. My old twenty is working fine, so I'm just gonna stick here. Yeah. Wow, my refresh is not working. Yeah, I'm gonna close the tab and just reopen it. Well, did I'll be right back. Okay. Bye. <laughs> uh. I, I can't. Can you, can you guys still hear me? Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm going to just leave it because closing the tab for me means I have to reset up uh, everything for, uh, for OBS. So, yeah. I have no idea what's going on with Roll20 right now, but luckily I don't need to change music or anything right now. So. Uh, we'll see if, if, if the commander comes back. Otherwise, I'm, I may have to close the tab and, and reopen it. I'm... Uh, the as well. joys of... Really? This is not gonna... It's not gonna do anything, is it? Can anyone hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. I can hear you. Uh, have we have we got Henry back? Nope. All right. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have to uh, uh, open a new tab for this. So uh, I'll be back, guys. Sorry, folks. We will be right back. Hi, fo folks. We're back. Uh, roll twenty. Uh, uh, shit the bed. And uh, now it's uh, now now it's fixed. So, 
Hooray! <laughs> uh, so everybody uh, uh, has hidden. Um, uh, com- Commander, did I get your uh, your your stealth check? Uh, it was a twenty-two. Twenty-two K, Andre. Twenty-one. K, okay, Briar. Twenty-eight. Blue Ann. Uh, I can't do it, baby. Well, that would be a uh, 12. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you, you all think you're stealthed. Uh, as you all kind of uh, press down, uh, 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 you guys start hearing uh, the sounds of footsteps uh, and then you start feeling uh, kind of the, the, the presence of magic um, and uh, you see uh, six uh, humanoids uh, of various races some some dark elves some humans uh, maybe one of them is a half elf. You're not sure, but they come forward uh, with uh, four of them dressed in 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 dark leathers with belt buckles that look very familiar to you, and rapiers at their side, and then two wearing uh, robes with with staves that are kind of staying to the back, and. Uh, one of the one in, in dark leathers comes forward and goes, We know you're there. Come out. Let's do this like civilized men. How far away is he from me? Um, right now, he's about 150 feet. Okay. Yeah, they they seem to be very very aware of at least roughly where you guys are. The weird thing about it is you guys don't know where. Again, you're in a relatively open space. You don't know where they came from. Like you were all hiding and 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 focus on that, and then you saw them walking towards you. But you're not sure if they came out of the woods, if they came from the water. They're dry, um, and you don't see a vessel or anything, but they're definitely there. I'm just looking over at where I saw Death dive down, see what he's doing. Uh, from from where you are, you actually can't see him. Okay. Um, you're just, you know... There was, there was so few hiding spots that none of you guys can see more than maybe one or two other people. Um, other than uh, Lillian, just about everyone can see Lillian. Um, uh, she didn't seem to hide quite as well. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, anything, uh, anything you guys want to do? I'm going to stay put until I see something. Okay. So Same. They, yeah. uh, they start walking forward and um, uh, they they start walking directly towards where you are, Henri. Like, without okay. any deviation or anything, it's like they're just pinpointed right at at, at you. They're not invisible or anything. I can see them. Uh, yeah, and they're not they are not moving stealthily or anything like that. They are just walking towards you. Uh, or where you are hiding. And you're relatively certain that they, sh- they shouldn't be able to see you. Like, you've, you've hidden yourself pretty well. Um, uh, you, um, uh, remind me, do you, uh, do you still have the the belt buckle, or who? Uh, had... No, I gave that to commander. That, that oh, would okay. be me. Oh, okay. Sorry, they're walking towards the commander. Then sorry. Oh, okay. Technically, I have a belt buckle, but it is not attuned. 
Yeah, Commander has one attuned, but Vala yeah. has one unattuned. Okay. I'm still going to, just so I don't have to keep re- changing things, I'm going to say they're walking towards the Commander. And again, Commander, you you don't, you tactically, you're in a good position. You've got really good cover. You don't know how they could be making a beeline for you. I guess, uh, how far away are they right now? Uh, at this point, they, they, they've closed to about, uh, uh, between like a hundred and, um, 80, uh, 80 feet. Cause they're, they're spreading out a little bit. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll stand up before they get too close enough to see everybody else and then walk away from the group towards them. Hold my hands up. Okay. And the, uh, for, uh, the foreign dark leathers take, uh, and draw their swords and just, they don't really like aim the match or anything. They just kind of draw their swords, keep walking towards you. Uh, and they go, that's a good lad. The the one in front goes, that's a good lad. This will be much, much faster if you just cooperate. Uh, I... And suddenly, uh, he's not in front of you anymore. And you feel a presence behind you. And I would like everyone to, to roll for initiative. Oh, boy. Oh. If I was a good dungeon master, I would have pre-rolled their initiative. Argento, what you got? 16. Vala. 6. Commander. 16. Henri. Uh, 20, not natural. Briar. Uh, 20, not natural. And Lillian. Bro. All right, so Andre and Briar, which one of you guys wants to go first? Ladies first. Uh, okay, I'm still invisible, allegedly. So I'm just gonna make my way towards the commander. So what you uh, what you see that the commander can't see uh, is as soon as the initiative starts is that. Uh, one of the guys in in, in um, dark leathers has cast uh, a spell that you're familiar with, Dimension Door, uh, to get behind him and is about to run him through uh, with his rapier. Oh, how far away am I? Uh, we'll say you're about thirty feet, roughly. You guys had to kind of spread out to get behind cover. <laughs> in that case, I shall cast a new spell for me. Magic Missile. Is that an, Do I have to roll an attack for that, or is it just damage? Uh, that's auto damage. Okay. Well, let me dig for a d4. Hang on. Oh, here we go. So, uh, you guys... Four, five. Uh, level one, you um, uh, cast three uh, magic missiles. And okay, then for so the each first level was... higher, you add another missile. Okay. So the first one was a five. Okay. Then another five. Okay. And then a four. So 14. Yeah. Go me! <laughs> so uh, you guys see kind of a, uh, a kind of a flash of light as Briar uh, points your. Um, 
or actually it would make more sense. Uh, you guys see kind of a darkening as Briar kind of appears out of the shadow and these three bolts of dark energy just shoot out from her and impact this guy right as he's about to, to stab um, uh, the commander. Uh, and he kind of looks at you and you can see the other three guys uh, kind of clock you and uh, the two in the back kind of look in and see you as well. Uh, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? Uh, nope. I'm done. Henri. How many of uh, the bad guys can I get in a 20-foot cube that won't hit any allies? Uh, o- only one. They have, ac- they have actually spread out um, pretty far. Okay. Um... They, they seemed prepared for this. In that case, uh, are we in direct sunlight? That's my next question. Uh, currently, yes. Okay. So then I will... I will just do Told the Dead because I don't have to roll an attack for that. Okay, what, what's the save? Uh, 16... Wisdom on the uh, one that she hit with magic missile. We rolled an eighteen, so okay. So you guys watch as Henri uh, starts to to kind of conjure uh, some magic, and you hear this kind of loud ringing, and uh, the uh, 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 guy next to a commander just holds his ears really quickly and doesn't seem to to take any damage from it. But he kind of looks over and he kind of clocks you, and you see everyone else kind of clock you as well. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? Uh, try and put thirty more feet in between me and someone else. Uh, okay, you can. Uh, basically, where 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 you are right now is you've got the commander who's about twenty feet away from you because you were a little closer, uh, and then you've got. Um, uh, the Angel of Death, who's about 10 feet behind you, um, and Briar, who is about 15 feet to your right, are the people that are, are nearest to you, and then the guys are all in, in front of you right now. Okay, I'll just, I'll actually uh, move towards the uh, guy who's behind Commander. Okay. Uh, you're, you're close enough that you could get right, right up to him. He's only about, yeah. like I said. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so you get right up next to him. Um, that ends that. Uh, it's their turn now. Um, uh, yeah, he's going to decide that you're a little more trouble than he really wants to deal with. I have to remember how this works at higher levels. It creates puppies for us to play with. It, Aww, that's puppy. exactly what it does. Except it doesn't. Hello, Paul. They're puppies to me. <laughs> I need wisdom saving throws from Henri, the commander, and Lillian. Wisdom. Wisdom, yep. Oh, hey, that's one of my proficient ones. Cool. Yeah. I'll take that. Okay. It's a 19 for me. Damn. Uh, uh, okay, so, Commander, you you got a 19? No, no that was Henri. No, Henri got a 19. Okay, Commander? I got 20, not natural. Not natural. Okay, and then Lillian? Damn you all! Really quick, uh, <laughs> Jody. Yeah. Really quick. Um, just for my class, does is it undead related? Because then they would have a saving throw to even target me or whatever. The these are not undead. Okay. Cool. Um, however, that went over so well. Uh, I want everyone to do it again. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Same three. Uh, yep, Commander Henri William. Well, you're going to be happy this time. 
<laughs> Rocking that natural one. Okay, Commander? Oh, no. Uh, 15. Okay, Lillian? 17. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's the only one. Uh, uh, yeah, they're not going to waste another one on that. So uh, the guy um, right behind the commander spins. Uh, oh, and Henri, um, you feel all of your muscles tighten and seize, and you are currently paralyzed. Uh, and the one that was uh, two, two of the uh, guys in, in black that are about, uh, like I said, about uh, they, they move in to, to be about 60 feet away. Um, uh, cast spells uh, on you guys. Um, and then the one that was right there just turns towards Henri. And... I mean, he'll probably hit. Okay. Suddenly missing my plate-armored cleric about now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 20... Uh, 20, 22? Yep. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 9 piercing damage plus 18 poison damage. And I need a con save. Let me double check. I have a bunch of weird resist. Okay, that's not one of them. Uh, you said 18 plus 9 total? Yep. So tw- okay. 27 total. Uh, con save, uh, 19. All right, you feel poison from the blade kind of coursing through your veins, but you, even being paralyzed, you're able to kind of fight it as as much as you can. Oh, do I have a disadvantage for being paralyzed, or is that only dex? Uh, you auto-fail dex and strength okay. saves. Uh, constitution is not affected by paralysis. Okay. Um, and then uh, after uh, kind of stabbing into you, he kind of uh, twirls around... Uh, with a uh, uh, kind of a flourish and slashes uh, across your throat. That's a nat 20, which doesn't matter because any hit is a crit. It's a double crit. Uh, this is only going to be 13 piercing damage. As he just kind of stabs you I, I, again with his rapier. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one uh, is just going to uh, point his hand at you, and you will see two bolts of uh, green energy just start flying at you. I think they love me, guys. 17. Yep. I would like to use cutting words to reduce the attack. Okay. Go ahead and, and roll. Um, is it a D4, I believe? It's no, it's your, bardic, it's your bardic die. Yeah, it's your bardic die, which should be, I, I believe, a 6 now. Okay. I reduce it by 3. Okay, so that brings it down to 14. Just misses. I'm at 15. <laughs> So it, you see one of these bolts as he sits there and points his finger. You see this bolt of green energy go, uh, and and Vala uh, just kind of pipes up. Hey, that's my friend. And he kind of moves, and then he kind of looks at you and clocks your position, and then points again. Uh, Twenty-two. Against me. Yes. Uh, yeah, that hits. Where is my D10? There we are. Eight force damage. Uh, as one of these bolts of, of Elder's energy kind of slams into you and you're still... Muscles still frozen. I'm assuming you're still conscious? Yes, but barely. Kay. I mean, I'll get to use my level six ability soon. <laughs> uh, so that's all their turns. Uh, crap, uh, I actually did that backwards. Um, it's the other guys that are actually supposed to go first. 
So they'll just go now, seeing as you guys are still below both of them. Jesus. Wishing they were undead right now. <laughs> well, they don't seem quite as uh, focused on, on you. They're going... They have clocks. Vala, Commander, Lillian, Briar. Well, Briar cast magic, so... Yeah, they're going to cast... Uh, you see both of them, kind of, uh, both the casters in the back, Briar, kind of look at you and point their staffs at you and see these bolts of red flame just start heading towards you. Um, what did they get? Plus five. Okay. Uh, 17? Just barely hits. And that one. Uh, 23. Yep. And 10. Uh, Scorching Ray, that's a D8. 2D6 per. 2D6, thank you. So it's 4D6, so... Don't do that. Seven. Eight. Eleven. You take eleven uh, total points of fire damage as uh, two kind of beams of uh, flame just smack into you. Uh, and that's all they're going to do right now because they don't know where all of you are yet. Uh, that ends their turn. Uh, the Angel of Death uh, takes out a heavy crossbow and goes for the one that's closest uh, that's that's killing Henri and he is hidden from them and rolled two threes okay. he's uh, he's just going to kind of sit back you hear a th- <laughs> uh Surprisingly enough, though, uh, it, it misses the guy, and it doesn't. Uh, he doesn't seem to notice where the bolt came from. He's, he's looking around, and uh, Warden was able to, to kind of um, get himself back to cover fast enough that uh, he didn't seem to reveal himself by missing so badly. Nobody knows that he failed. Yeah. Um... So, Commander Argenta, who wants to go first? I'll go first. So, I shall take out my shortbow. Okay. And fire first shot at the guy that's killing Henri. Okay. Uh, That's a... What is that? That's a 16 hit. I believe so, but I have actually forgotten the armor class. Give me two seconds. Sixteen does hit. Okay, he takes uh, seven piercing. Okay. And then second shot is a and a seventeen. So he takes another eight piercing. Right, so two arrows t- t- stick into his shoulder. He's starting to look a little bit rough, uh, but because he has arrows sticking out of him, uh, but but seems to be kind of taking it all in stride. Uh, and anything else you want to do with your turn? Um, no. Commander, uh, I would like to pull out my rapier and spin around and start attacking the guy on Henri. Okay. First one, it's a uh, math 23. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, second one, oh, crap. Uh, 16. Uh, both, both, both of those hits. Okay. So you go roll, roll, roll damage. Uh, 10 for the first one. Seven for the second one. 
All right. So uh, uh, spitting around, you 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 stab twice, and because his back is to you, uh, he doesn't seem to be able to, to get it. After you stab once, he kind of turns and and uh, prepares to parry uh, the attack, and you kind of twirl around his blade and get in and, and stab him a second time. You can see now he's he's bleeding relatively heavily. He's starting to breathe a little bit harder. Um, any anything else you want to do with your turn? Uh, is it a third attack? I can't remember. Is that or is that with archery? I can't remember if it's. Uh, you, uh, get, you yeah. don't you don't get a third attack until uh, tier tier three. Yes, right. All right. Okay. Um, no, I'm gonna stay right there. Okay. Uh, v- v- Vala, you are up next. Okay, I am going to. Um. I'm just going to look at uh, Henri and say, friend, and use healing word okay. to give him uh, five points of healing. Henri, you feel slightly better being called a friend? I'm back up to double digits now. <laughs> oh, it's too bad that all melee attacks against you are auto crits. And then if I uh, get up towards him, how many of them can I get into a 15-foot column if I get next to Henri? There's only one guy near Henri. The rest are about 60 feet away, Um, which if you went towards them, you could probably get two of them in uh, a 15-foot code. I will go towards Henri then. And yeah, uh, all the damage he's taken was really just from one guy. There was an right, Eldritch so Blast I, in there, but I am going to attempt to cast Wit Bolt on him. Okay, is that a, a save or a? I have to make a ranged spell attack. Okay. going to use my advantage or my uh, inspiration uh, inspiration. for breaking the DM Um, 25 to hit definitely hits roll damage okay this is going to be fun what level is it level 2 2d12 2d12 11 wow. and 5. So 16, 16 points of electric damage. So you guys watch as, as Vala. What, what do you use as a, a focus again? Um, I have a uh, like a, a, a quartz crystal underneath my shirt. Okay. So you watch her kind of grab this, this crystal and kind of point it and you see just this bolt of electricity uh uh, Darth Sidious style just kind of come out and keep connecting to uh, this guy. You can now see his nose is bleeding. Um, he's starting to get burns from where the lightning is striking him, but he's still just barely standing up. A- a- anything else you want to do? Uh, no, that'll be my turn. Okay. I, th- I think I actually missed Lian. You were supposed to go before Vala. So we'll put you in now and then I'll Next time, next round, it'll be in the right order. Uh, right now, it's it's just the one uh, that's uh, attacking Henri. Um, uh, the other ones are about 60 feet away, so they're just uh, slightly outside of melee range, but you could get it within melee range. You just wouldn't be able to attack that this turn. Uh-huh. I will, um, and I cut draw my sword, cut my palm, and I make crazy white, and I cut the one going out there. Okay. So you guys watch as, as Lillian uh, draws her sword and then draws a little bit of blood with it. The, the, the blade erupts in flames. And uh, Lillian uh, walks over and, and, and what's your attack? 22 to hit. 
definitely. Go ahead and roll damage. Seven. 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 All right, so as you come over and you slash, uh, you kind of cut across uh, his midsection and actually slice through uh, his his dark leathers. Uh, and you watch him kind of clutch the wound as it bleeds out and looks up at you and his eyes roll back and he hits the ground. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? You still have movement and technically one more attack. Um, yeah, it, it took you about uh, <laughs> 10 feet of movement to get to him, so yeah. if you want to start heading towards the other guys, you can. Yeah, oh. Okay. So you you head forward, make a little bit of glass on the way as you you know slice through the sand. Uh, that brings us back to the top of the order now, uh, Briar. Okay. So the one that was killing Henri is dead. Yes. Okay, and there's still one near commander? Uh, no, uh, that was the same one. Okay. Uh, there's there's three more guys in, in, in dark leathers uh, who are about 60 feet away from the party, roughly. Uh, and then about uh, 40 feet behind them are two casters. So they're about uh, 100 feet away from the party. Shit, hockey mushrooms. Uh, uh, good. I- Ew, no. <laughs> I'm gonna, I guess, use my movement to get closer. Okay. To spell casters. Okay. Hang on, I'm trying to find the thing that does the thing with the thing. Um, and then I'm going to, am I within 120 feet at that point? Yeah, you started within 120 feet. They were only 100 feet away. Just making sure. I'm then going to pick one of the spellcasters, don't care which one, and cast Chill Touch. Okay. Go ahead and make your attack roll, I believe. Yes. Nat 20. That's a miss. (laughs) Um, Remember, uh, because you're above level 5... Uh, it should be, what, 2d8? D8. Yeah. Should be 4 with the crit. Okay. I have d8 somewhere in this giant thing. And your 40 sets of dice. Yeah, you should. Did, hmm. you, say, did you say 40? Because that's cute. <laughs> Alright, we got... You cannot have a, too many di- di- dice. You can't. A... 16, 19. 19, okay. Uh, he looks uh, rough. You, you guys watch as Briar uh, extends her hands, and this kind of shadow claw just leaps out and goes and like grips this guy by the throat and lifts him just slightly off the ground. He claws at his throat, and it eventually goes away, leaving some rather deep bruising there. Uh, uh, but he's still upright and looking remarkably upset with you. A- any, <laughs> anything else you want to do? I blow him a kiss and then I'm done. Uh, Henri, uh, I need uh, another wisdom save. Yeah, I'm just throwing that dice away. <laughs> it's the third nat one tonight. Gotcha. <sighs> so you are still paralyzed, unfortunately. This is reminiscent of another fight from another campaign. Uh... Ooh. The uh, two casters are really not liking you. Um, And they're thinking that your friends probably could use uh, some bad things to happen to them. So uh, you see them uh, move around a little bit. uh, And I'm going to have... Yeah... Commander and Henri. Uh, Henri, you're going to auto-fail this. Uh, Commander, I need a deck save. Oh, boy. Uh, can anyone off the top of their head, so I don't have to get this other book, uh, Lightning Bolt. What's the damage 80s. on that? It's 80. 80. Thank you. Oh, 
well. I mean, he could roll eight ones. I mean, I'm pretty sure a nine will work. Yeah. As long as it's not 106, I'll be fine. No more numbers. I have to count. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Start singing that one song. <laughs> 22 lightning damage to the both of you as this bolt of lightning just arcs through uh, the both of you. Here's the question. Since I'm paralyzed, would I still fall to the ground unconscious or would I just be staying there? Uh, yeah, you would still uh, fall to the ground unconscious because once you're okay. unconscious, the spell... Stops affecting you. All right. Uh, so you uh, uh, you guys watch as Andre drops, and the commander is just kind of shot full of lightning. Uh, and the other guy uh, is going to... Yeah, I need deck saves from Vala, Argenta, Commander, and Lillian. Oh, jeez, everybody... Sense. Fireball has a very large uh, natural fire effect. Am I in that? Because I was right next to Commander. Technically, yeah. So it'll be one. It'll just be one failed de- uh, death save. Okay. Uh, it only uh, counts as a, a crit if it's a melee within five feet. So I have to roll again. You know what? No, I'm not going to because it's it's another. It's, uh, 86. 86, right? Yep. Yeah. So, 31 damage to anyone that save, uh, doesn't save. Uh, uh, 15 to anyone that saves. So, uh, Argenta, what'd you get? 18. You save, Vala? 21. You save, Commander? Natural 20. You save, Lillian? Um, uh, so you take the full blunt. Thirty one, you said. Say again. Thirty one, they made you say. Thirty one. Yep. Yeah, yep. Oh, we'll have to get you some sunglasses, Henri. <laughs> yep. Uh. Um. So, uh, yeah, uh, that ends their turn. Can I use a reaction on the one who threw the fireball? You can. What are you, rea- uh, what? Hellish rebuke. Okay. Uh, roll your damage. Okay. Is, that a, is there a save on that? It's a dex save. It's a dex save. Because Valos are turning fire with fire, literally. Well, he failed. I do roll that one. A one, a three, and a one. <laughs> Five fire. Plus so, four more because of my background. Okay. Nine, or because five. of my uh, patron. So nine damage. So you uh, sit there and, and this burst of flame explodes from you. Uh, and he sits there and he just cowers. And by the time it gets to him, it has kind of died out. To this, just this dull ember that singes him a little bit. He's like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay! <laughs> For now! Uh, Just wait. It is now the dudes in black leather's turn. And they're gonna rush up to Lillian. Okay. But are not able to. Well, two of them will. Uh, they're not able to get close enough to attack without dashing. So now they're kind of crossing swords right next to Lillian. Uh, and the third one uh, uh, is going to just point his finger at, at Vala and fire off a couple shots. Twelve. V- that 12 does not hit my armor class. Okay. 
And 19. 19 does hit. Uh, 13 points of force damage. Uh, that ends his turn. All their turns. Uh, that brings us to the, 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 uh, the commander. Or, actually, no. Death? Yeah, the, uh, Angel of Death is going to try once again to do something useful. Death Angel. Aiming for the caster that is already... I rolled two threes last time. I rolled a four this time. Seven... What's his armor class? He might actually hit with this one. He dead! Yeah, dead. Uh, I don't want to have to add. Uh, plus, I need a D10, I think, for a heavy crossbow, right? Yeah, yeah. D10 for the heavy. Two. Uh, he's still up, but he looks like shit. <laughs> uh, so yes, now he's given his position away, and 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 the guys kind of clock his position. Uh, that ends his turn. Now it is Commander. Argenta's first. What? Yeah, I am first. Yeah, Argenta goes first for me. I I have no idea what you just said. Uh, I went first before me. Yeah, I went before Commander did. Oh, yeah, because you're both at 16. I'm sorry. Argenta. Um, how far is the one that Death just shot from me? Uh, from from where you are right now, uh, yeah. about 80 feet. That's within. That's the short bow range, so I'm taking a shot at him. Okay. Um, that is a 21. And it's definitely a hit. Uh, uh, he takes six piercing. He drops to the floor as an arrow hits him in the heart. And he just. Uh, uh, uh. How far is the other mage? Uh, they're both both about eighty feet. Second shot's going to him then. Um, better twenty three. Uh, def- definitely a hit. Six piercing again. Okay. And then, he how far s- is? Go ahead. Oh, Go he ahead. doesn't want. He hasn't seemed quite as as hurt as the other one. Seen as that's the yeah. first thing that's touched him. Uh, how far is uh, Lillian and the ones threatening her from me? Uh, math is hard. Uh, about twenty feet. I'm going to run within melee of both of them and okay. just snarl as my tattoos flare and I go into a rage. Okay. Uh. Cool. Then we go to Commander. Uh, okay, so how how many are left? And there where are, are th- three uh, guys in black or in dark leathers. Two of them okay. are right next to uh, Argenta and uh, Liliane. The third one is uh, back closer to the the one caster that's alive. And then oh. again, there's one caster alive. All right. So there's yeah. Okay. There's a total uh, of four bad guys left. Gotcha. Um, I would like to uh, pull out my gun okay. and uh, aim for... Uh, I don't want to do without lightning or anything like that again, so I'll go for the caster. Okay. Um, let's see. Or she pull out the cool toy when Henri's unconscious and can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll burn on that end of it. I will burn a grid for a dead eye. Okay. Take the other one over that last one. Uh, that is a twenty, not natural. Uh, definitely hits. All right. You do have right. two shots, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's uh, eight points for the first one. Okay. And I'll just do it as a normal shot the second time. Okay. 
Uh, 16. Another hit. Go ahead and, cool. and roll damage. Again, really? Uh, that's eight points again. Uh, he's looking pretty rough. You guys watch as um, uh, Commander uh, kind of um, uh, spins and you see the, the long coat that he wears kind of flares out as he pulls out uh, this uh, firearm. Goes and aims down at first, fires. You see blood and shrapnel fly off of uh, one of the uh, uh, casters uh, as his shoulder is la- um, launched back, and then he fires another shot and it hits him right in uh, right in the chest, and the the, the whole chest cavity kind of um, gets knocked back a little bit, and he's breathing pretty heavily now, um, but still upright. Uh. I'll do it. I'll burn my action surge. Okay. <laughs> and uh, maybe my two more attacks again. Uh, yeah. So with blinding speed, you watch him kind of uh, spin, uh, spin again. Uh, bring the the gun to bear another time. Fire it. Bas- uh, basically, uh, fanning uh, the hammer. <laughs> uh, it's a natural fourteen plus nine. That's twenty. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, that one's better. Uh, ten points uh, piercing for that one. Another shot uh, hits him in the chest. Uh, he's bleeding profusely from these bullet wounds. Good God! Okay, last shot. He was he has an almost, arrow. And... Yeah, he was almost pristine before you started shooting him. So, okay, he's fair point. an arrow and three bullets. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, 15. Another hit. Oh, okay, good. Um, Surprisingly enough, robes don't provide much protection. And they didn't give him shield. Uh, another 10 points. Uh, he, uh, kind of drops to one knee for a second, bleeding, just covered in blood, forces himself to stand back up, and brings his staff up, looking like he's going to ready another attack when his turn comes around. Yes, his turn comes around. (laughs) Anything else you want to do? Uh, There's nothing else I can do. Big him, good for him at. Well, literally what's happened to this guy is he's been pristine, casts a spell, and then... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Little Gang, you're up up next. um... Go for it. You have advantage because I am there and raging. Oh, uh, oh, you have pack tactics now? I'm a wolf totem barbarian. <laughs> does that only apply to you or does it apply to all your allies too? I don't benefit from it at all. It's any oh. ally that makes an attack on an enemy within five feet of me while I'm raging. Okay. If it's a melee attack, you have advantage. All right. So, oh. twenty-three. Uh, def definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. That would be. Oh, my friend. Sixteen damage. All right. So, Lillian. Uh, comes forward with 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 her or, uh, with her flaming longsword, uh, and Argenta just screams uh, in rage and kind of catches the guy off guard. And Lilian goes in and just kind of slashes across. I believe you have another attack. Yeah, he still up. Yeah, no, uh, these guys haven't been touched. Oh. You all kind of focus fired the other guy down. Twenty four. Uh, def- definitely a hit. Roll damage. Twelve damage. Uh, so again, uh, Lillian kind of spins around, slashes mm. upwards, uh, gets another cut that kind of self cauterizes. Uh, he's looking rough, but uh, not, you know, not too bad yet. Uh, 
that uh, end your turn? Yeah. Vala, you, 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 you're up. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to Henri and sing, Stay alive, stay alive, and do Healing Word. <laughs> I'm never going to use my And give it five more hit points. Okay, so you are conscious and prone. Next, I know I have a playmate. Is there another... Uh, one of his friends within five feet of him, or are uh, they more spread out? No, they're they're a little bit more spread out. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. Uh, however, uh, the the two guys that are by uh, Lillian and and Argenta are within five feet of each other. Uh, can I rush over that way without taking a, an opportunity attack? Uh, the guy that attacked you shot you with Eldritch Blast. Oh, oh! Now I'm gonna I'm gonna run over to those other two, okay? And I am going to cast a green flame blade, okay. and make a melee attack on one. Go for yeah, it! Advantage. <laughs> Are you aiming for the one that uh, Lillian hit? Or uh, the other one? I am. I'm going to aim for the one. I'm gonna aim for the other one. Okay. All right. So you guys watch as Vala uh, just kind of leaps up, brings a... What, what kind of sword are you using? A silvered rapier. Rapier. So brings out this rapier. You watch her kind of draw a finger along the blade, and these green flames uh, erupt from it. She comes in with her advantage attack roll. So that is 20 to hit. Definitely a hit roll damage. Okay, so... More fire. This is going to be funny. Yeah. So I do oh uh four damage with the blade. Go ahead plus, and give me the the initial damage for the guy you're hitting as just one number and then the extra fire damage roll separately. Or no, it's okay, so yeah, it you'll roll separately. So he takes four damage from the blade and five damage from the fire. So nine. Nine total, and then the second guy. Mm -hmm. um, Should be a D8 plus your uh, charisma, I guess it would be for you? Yes, charisma. So that's uh, because it's 2D8, because I'm sixth level now. Um, Uh, No, uh, 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 at uh, the base level, it's just your intelligence modifier or in this case your charisma modifier um, uh, at level 5 the extra damage turns into a d8 plus your intelligence modifier it's a booming blade that's 2d8 well no no, no. so okay, hold on a sec right. I'll actually I'll, I'll look at the spell and read it for you alright so green flame blade uh on a hit, this target suffers the attack's normal effects, and green fire leaps to the target from the target to a different creature of your choice that you can see within five feet of it. The second creature takes fire damage equal to your spellcasting ability modifier. The spell's damage increases when you reach levels. At fifth level, the melee attack deals an extra 1d8 fire damage to the target, and the fire damage to the secondary creature increases to 1d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Sorry. That is what I missed. I did not realize the second attack also increased. Um, I already add my charisma modifier to fire damage. Do I add that twice or just the once? Because of uh, Undying Light, I, my patron. Until it breaks the game, I'm going to say, yeah, double dead. Okay. I, if um, I regret this case, later, I, I, I may say no, but. For right now, if it makes me feel better. I, I forgot to add it to the first attack. Um, so on the second attack, it would be three plus eight, so eleven for the second attack. Uh, so the guy in front of Lillian is now kind of bleeding because the fire just kind of leaped and burned him. Uh, the one that you just hit, uh, is is uh, uh is hurt, but. 
but not too bad. Uh, any, anything else you want to want to do with your turn? That'll be it. All right. Uh, top of the order, uh, Briar. Okay, so one spellcaster still standing. Barely. That's enough for me. We're doing chill touch again. Okay. Because it worked so well last time. It it slowed their movement by ten feet. So <laughs> when they didn't move. They uh, didn't move seven, 10 feet less. 17. It's a hit. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. I'm actually not sure you can roll low enough. You theoretically could. Eight. Yeah, he's gone. Yay! You sit there and again, this, this claw of shadow energy goes and kind of grabs him. And this time just carries him off his feet and carries him directly to the ground. And he's not moving. Any, Sweet. Any, anything else you want, want to want, want to do with your turn? Uh, turn around and face the other baddies, and that's it. Okay. Uh, Henri? Well, seeing as how I have disadvantage regardless, I'm not going to get up, and I'm just going to blast each of the two remaining guys with Elder's Blast. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So, 22 is the lowest. Wow. Wow. Maybe I should go prone. That's the key. Just roll well, the second range attack. Range attacks against you do have disadvantage. <laughs> the tactic. Oh, okay. Uh, that one's a 23. Uh, you miss both of them. Uh, these against wow. the same target uh, or different ones? One of each. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, they, they, they both hit. Uh, the one that's been getting attacked takes 8, and the one that hasn't takes 11. New tactic, guys. I'm going to drop prone every fight. <laughs> uh, so you guys watch as, as two bolts of... What 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 color is your Eldritch Blast, Henri? Uh, just because it fits, we'll just say black. So two bolts of black energy just shoot out from Henri and hit both of these guys, knocking the wind out of them. Uh, the one in front of Lillian, uh, where it hits, you hear this crunching sound, and you see an oozing wound there. Uh, from where bone is partially sticking out, uh, he's looking pretty rough. Um, and, and anything else you want to do with your turn? No, it's comfy down here. Uh, all right. Uh, had some attack rolls against Lillian. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, yeah. That will be uh, six piercing damage plus fourteen poison. And I need a con save. Uh, uh, you are poisoned for one minute. Uh, and then he comes around with another attack for a nat 20. Uh, so that's... Um, 13 piercing damage. Uh, as, uh, yeah, he, he attacks you twice. Uh, the other guy turns towards uh, Argenta and is actually... No, he's, he's going to turn towards uh, Preach. Uh, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. I thought everyone had forgotten about me. Sixteen. Uh, you're fine. Yay! Uh, the last guy is going to turn towards Vala and hold his belt buckle up. And Vala, I need you to make a wisdom save. You're muted, just so you know. Um, I is this against being charmed? It is. So I, as a drow descendant, I have advantage, correct? Yes, as a half sure. earth like me. <laughs> I don't know that I need it. Oh, 18 and a 17. So... You fail because I uh, say you fail. <laughs> uh, Sorry, you this... are fine as well. Uh, Wisdom, 22. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're perfectly fine. 
I thought about the raging barbarian, but I don't. I'm not sure if you can be charmed right now. I can. Let me rephrase I'm not this. They're not sure you can be charmed oh. right now. Fair enough. Uh, and the one that's been healing is a much more viable target. Um, that ends them. Uh, Lillian, Death. you hear the familiar sound of a bolt coming from behind you. Shit. It misses, unfortunately. Uh, and he goes back to hiding. Uh, he thinks he's hidden. Um, <laughs> Commander, or er, Argenta. The bow drops as Argenta um, reaches to her hip and grabs the her hand axe and the one that's heavily injured mm -hmm. just going for the neck reckless attack. Okay. Uh, that's a lot better. Yeah, that's a plus six, so 24. Uh, def definitely a uh, hit roll damage. 11 slashing. All right. So you sit there and you rip into uh, his shoulder, making a deep gash. He's 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 still upright, but he's bleeding real heavy. Here comes a second reckless attack. Lost a die for a moment. Um. No, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Yep. That's it. Okay. That's a hit. He takes nine slashes. Still up, but looking rough. Yeah, that's Any, anything else you want to do with your turn? Nope, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, Commander. Uh, I don't know how much uh, you want to... But I want to... Uh, what do you want to count it as? But I want to drop the rapier and to reload the gun. So I don't know if you want to count the, the dropping as anything. No, just 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 dropping. Okay, cool. And it's a uh, action to reload, correct? Uh, I believe it's an attack to reload. Oh, that's right. I always get that. It's because I don't know why. I always get that mixed up. Yeah. Uh, okay. So first attack is to reload. And then second one, uh, and there are how many standing up still? Three. Two that are close and one that's that's further away. Uh, and the one next to Lillian looks like a stiff wind will knock him over. All right, I'll go ahead and take him. Okay. Uh, that would be a... 20 not natural to hit. De 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 definitely hits. The roll okay. damage. Uh, 10. He drops as the bullet kind of blasts away a bit of his skull and he just hits the ground lifeless. And I get a great point from that, don't I? Do you think so? I'd yeah, have to look at the class again, but I believe so. Whenever you kill something of yep. significant threat. Okay. This is the their challenge rating four, so. Okay. Uh, and then that's my turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, Lillian. The dude you were fighting is dead. Hi. What is it? Whoever bought me or did I want Uh, there's, a, there's another one next to you. You you had two, there's now one. Alright. Uh, then I go for that guy. Okay, you, you, you still have your advantage from, from Argenta. Oh, uh, 24 to hit? Yep, yep. Uh, that would be 15 damage. Okay. 
Stupid. Okay, okay. Yep, 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 yep. The the uh, AC, AC for these guys is, is 15. That will be 14 damage. Starting to bleed pretty heavily now. The the cauterization from your sword isn't isn't closing the wounds anymore. And anything else you want to do? Uh, no, that will be my two. That, 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 that. Okay, I am going to attack him with my green flame blade again. Go, go, go for it. Um, mm -hmm. maybe. Oh, it's, thank you. Ooh, that's better. 19 to hit. De definitely a hit, roll, roll damage. Okay. So with uh, Green Flayed Blade above level 5, you do a D8 Piercing, a D8 Fire, and your Dex Mod on the main target. Okay. So it's 2D8 plus your Dex Mod, basically. Okay, so from the sword, it's 7, and then uh, 5 for the, for the fire damage. All right, he's still upright, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, any, anything else you want to do with, 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 with your, your turn? Uh, I don't think I can do anything okay. else. Bonus. Wait, wait, no, I am going to inspire Briar. Okay. Well, Briar, it's, it's your turn. Yay. Uh, so I'm just going to... It seems to be working for me, so we're just going to stick with Chill Touch. Okay. You aiming at the one that, that's near Argenta and Lillian, or the one dude that's that's still far away? Ah, we'll go the far away one. Okay. Okay. Natural 20! It's a miss. <laughs> I'll retire that dice for tonight. It's literally the opposite of my dice tonight. <laughs> so, 10, 17, 20. He looks less than pleased. And anything else you want to do? Nope. All right. Uh, Henri? Um, because I'm extremely pissed off, I'm going to get up and then just start eating the dead body of the guy who damn near killed me. <laughs> Did you say eating or beating? With a B. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they think he's consuming his soul. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, that brings us to the guys. Uh, the one that's that's nearest uh, is going to take an attack at Lillian again. Uh, 24. So, again, 6 and 14. Okay, so you guys watch as Lillian falls unconscious. Uh, the other one, uh, seeing the situation, whispers a few words, and a door appears behind him, and he vanishes. Uh, as Lillian falls, the death. finally rolls something decent. Yeah, he's gone. And the guy that just knocked out Lillian uh, keels over with a, a crossbow bolt in his chest. Uh, so, uh, due to the fact that, that Vala and Henri will both technically have turns before or no, Lillian, I need a, a single death save from you. 
Okay. Uh, so between uh, Henri and Vala, uh, do either of you guys want to? I got up? this. I will cast Spare the Dying, okay. which now lets me heal you for five hit points. Okay. Once for a while. Uh, I finally got to use it. <laughs> Lillian, you're conscious again. And, uh, un, 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 unfortunately, uh, that's going to be, um, uh, uh, it's going to be, uh, all for tonight. Um, uh, as always, if, if, if you missed any of the episode, feel free to watch it on the YouTube channel. If you're, if you're watching it on my YouTube channel, please come join us live. We'd love to have you in chat, interact with you, you know, have you, uh, make bad puns that break the DM. Um, Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's 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 all for me today, and I will see you guys next time. All right, bye bye.